Welcome. How's everyone doing today? Who do we have here, by the way? Scoot out a little bit there. Cheers. Thanks for joining me. Hmm. I know you're thinking, is that water Tracy's drinking? Where is his coffee? <laughs> I do drink water. Supposedly it's good for you. Of course, coffee is better for you. I need to get endorsed by Starbucks or something. David's number one. Well, you guys, today we're going to practice pentatonic scales. Um, this is kind of a beginner lesson, I guess you could say, but pentatonics are not to be uh, overlooked. They're the most important scale, period. Chris, you hoser Malmstein. I, I really am a big fan of your brother, Ingve. <laughs> You're funny. Tom, welcome. Yeah. Yeah, say hi to your bro for me. Ingve uh, Ingve uses pentatonics. Everybody, Jimi Hendrix, who else? Django Reinhardt. Yukon, welcome. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of just saying why pentatonics are so important. Um, it's used in blues, country, rock, jazz. Jazz is really an extension of the blues. Um, it's a, just a beautiful scale. Uh, so let's talk theory for a minute here, why it's, what makes it so nice and so important. That's an all pentatonic melody right there. Summertime and the living is easy. That's pentatonic melody. So many melodies come out of the pentatonic scale. It's such a great source of information. Uh, you, It's almost too easy. Like you can play jazz standards and not be able to like necessarily navigate the chord changes and just play the pentatonic scale. I'll show you an example. Let's play a Fly Me to the Moon. Three. Fly me to the moon. And let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, I'll stop in a second. Hold my hands, just bear with me. In other words, baby, kiss me. Here we go. sneak in a little blues lick. It's pretty hard for me not to sneak in the blues when I'm playing pentatonics. So even though I say penta, which is five notes, I often sneak in that sixth note, the blue note. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Today's lesson is really just meant for those who have not really done that type of practicing yet. So I really want you to do it and have so much fun. And again, you can play jazz, you can play country rock, blues, pop music, of course, you know. Uh, it's so much fun if you have yet to really explore and master those five pentatonic shapes and just all over the fretboard. Uh, so grab the PDFs in the description. It's for free. Do this. I really appreciate it. That's what keeps these live streams going. Um, 
because it'd be sad just to do it kind of by myself. So <laughs> I need the encouragement. Um, so yeah, grab the PDFs and I'm going to pop up a few sound slice practice videos and just talk about the theory of it and some different approaches to practicing the pentatonic scales. Um, John, good to see you. John Everton from London. Is it a foggy day in London today? Let's see. London must be about 10 p.m. there. Getting kind of late. Thanks for tuning in. This is all pentatonic. I'm just kind of noodling. And, and on E minor penta, I'm kind of doing some diagonal stuff. And then I'll stay in one position. There's some different approaches that I like to use for practicing. So let's talk about the theory of what a pentatonic scale is. The pentatonic scale, I'm going to just use it... I'm going to base it off the major scale. The pentatonic scale is a major scale, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or this on G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the notes would be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. But the pentatonic scale eliminates the four and the seven. So you're left with one, two, three, five, six. And now I'm going to continue up on the fretboard this way. I call this a diagonal method. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One. So I went like this. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. It's beautiful shape on the on the fretboard, that this diagonal method. So it's a five-note scale that removes the fourth and the seventh from the major scale. And it just so happens that when you have the four. That's in the seven. That's where it creates the half steps. Okay. So I'm going to play it on one string. And I hope you guys can do this with me too. I'm just on G here on the first string. So go, uh, let's play the full major scale first. We have one, two, three. Then the fourth degree is a C. Five, six, seven, and eight. Now, don't let me confuse you. I'm, I'm not talking tabs here. I'll talk tabs in a second. I'm talking the scale degrees. I'm talking a little bit more music theory that you can apply to any key. Graham, welcome. 10.30 a.m. Graham is living in the future. That's the G major scale. So for the pentatonic scale, we want to eliminate the four and the seventh degree. So we're going to have this. And then skip this four and go to the to the 10th fret, which is the fifth degree, and the 12th fret, which is the sixth degree, and then back to the one, the eighth, which is the 15th fret. So in tab, the G major pentatonic scale on one string, the first string is three, five, seven, 10, 12, 15. And go backwards. See, there I went and added the blue note in. <laughs> Can't help myself. Like we're playing some rock here. name that chord progression. I was just kind of feeling it for some reason. I just made it up. <laughs> Play, hey, do you know the song? Play, what song? Play Freebird. Cheers, you hoser. Take off, eh? Check this out. And you want to do this on every string. You really just want to explore and have so much fun. So this is a G major pentatonic. I might have to think a little bit here. On the second string. I did. I messed up. Back 
back to the first tree. Back to the second string. Hours of fun. Just the jamming on the pentatonic. I did put the F sharp in just because I'm a jazzer and I like to hit those leading tones, but that's not necessary. I was, I was almost going to bust out some diminished legs too, but that's all about restraint. That's why I'm not drinking coffee right now and, and I'm drinking water for you guys so I can play tastefully for you. So pentatonic scale, there's a lot of different approaches to learning and I was just demonstrating on one string and, you know, you can start on any degree. Use the whole length of the scale, G. And just learn that. Learn the formula. That's what's important. But how I wrote it out and how I'm going to go over with you today is very methodical. We're going to start on the E minor. Uh, let me see if I get my fretboard in the picture. Um, and I th here's where the theory is important. E minor pentatonic, E minor is a relative of G major penta. Let me say that again. E minor is a relative of G major, period. So the E minor pentatonic is equivalent to the G major pentatonic. Same five notes, different starting degree. So the G major penta, you can write this down if you want. G, A, B, D, E. The E minor pentatonic is E, G, A, B, D, E. If you look on the paper, which I'll show you in a second, they're the same five notes. So it doesn't matter, it's just a different starting note. So you have the E minor, here it is starting on E, and I'm gonna load this up in a second here, I'm gonna do a screen share. But definitely do this if you are enjoying these live streams, I really appreciate it. Type in the chat who you are, where you're at. If you're on Patreon, that's even better. Patreon is my online music community and I'm putting out a lot of the live stream ones um, just kind of little bonus freebies for you. And you can just grab it in the description if you want the PDFs for these, the tabs. Let me see what I have loaded here for you. Let's take a look. I really like this screen share feature. So again, but I do want to just say this. Uh, it's important that you are able to recognize what the relative minor key is. So get ready to type on your chat and push enter or return. If I said C major, what minor? Chris. Yukon. C major is blank minor. Keith, Keith jumps in for the win. <laughs> Keith, I don't think I saw your name on there. Hey, welcome. Yes, good. You guys, that's important just to recognize that, you know, the, the major and the and its minor. The trick to that is three frets on the guitar, since we're all guitar players here probably watching, I'm assuming. If you're not a guitar player, type in the chat. I'm curious. I think most people on my channel are guitar players or ukulele players, of course. Uh, by the way, I'm going to pump this or pimp it out or whatever you want to say. Uh, <laughs> pimp it out. I have a ukulele Patreon that just started. It's dedicated just to the ukulele. If you're interested, uh, check out check out the link on the in my YouTube um, community or on Patreon. It's just dedicated solely to the ukulele. Just all the tabs, PDFs, and lessons will be only demonstrated on the uke, jazz uke mainly. Uh, so, but all this stuff too. So here's the trick: put your finger on C and walk it down three frets, and there's A minor. So you kind of have this sound. You know, it should be minor. So that's how you figure out the relative major and relative minor really fast. Three frets. Three is the magic number. You just got to remember, do I go up or do I go down three? Remember this. Major's happy. Major's up. Minor's sad. Uh, down. Down. So if I said G major. E minor. 
if I said D major, B minor. So when you're playing pentatonics, they're the same. Okay, so that means if you have a B minor chord, you can play D major penta. Okay. Likewise, just if you have a D major chord, you play B minor. So for guitar players, we like to organize major and minor. It helps us, at least I do. <laughs> That's how I teach it. So um, it helps us kind of just master the fretboard is what I usually say. Ready? Let's do some more. F sharp minor, what major? F sharp minor, what major? And I'm going to walk you through the process here. So I'm going to hit F sharp minor. Minor's down. That's sad. So I want to walk it up three frets to A major. Key. <laughs> That's okay. Ready? E flat major. What minor? C minor. Good. So that's very important. It's a minor third relationship. Okay. F minor, what major? F minor, what major? Keith is fast now. He's redeeming himself. I'm just playing this really fast. Who name your name song? Oh, Lullaby of Birdland. It's a jazz classic. But that is typically played in F minor. So when I'm soloing on it there, I was thinking F minor. Or A flat major penta. licks thrown in there for fun but that's kind of my style when i play jazz standards in general well, i don't turn on the distortion so much these days but i like to mix it up some blues licks pentatonic licks to the key and i'm going to show you some other pentatonics and then mix it up with two five ideas modes arpeggios <laughs> django licks and that's kind of a for me that's what i like to do Chris Hoser Momstein says, over the entire song, question mark? No. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. I did it through the whole A section. So it works on the A section, the, the B section. Uh, I would probably change it up for the B section. <laughs> I think I think it would work, but it, I don't know. I would mix it up because uh, it goes to B flat minor, the four. So I would probably be playing more B flat minor than, than the A flat major. Even though diatonically, they could be... <coughs> Related. So I'm just giving uh, my body's telling me that it wants coffee instead of water right now. <clears throat> so I'm just giving a few demonstrations um, 
another go. I just showed you Fly Me to the Moon, just showing you a few jazz standards. Uh, probably the most famous jazz standard ever. I'm going to do this bossa for you. Red and gold. I see your lips. Summer kisses. I see the hand. Who can name that chord progression? I hope all of you, all of you are on my Patreon. You know, I'm, I say this is the first song I teach to all my jazz students. And I, yes, Keith, good. Um, I've got tons of materials on Patreon for Autumn Leaves. Yes, I am promoting Patreon. Uh, but if you want to work on autumn leaves. But there I was just strictly playing the pentatonic scale, what I'm going to show you, the E minor. And I'm actually going through all five positions. In the key of G major, which is also E minor. And then you can do the diagonal method as well. Um, so let me load that up for you here. Let's do some practicing because um, I think I'm just wanting to give you a demonstration. I know UConn asked, why is it so important? Because it kind of just floats through the changes. A pentatonic scale does not define the key. One pentatonic scale can be th in three different keys. That's on a diatonic level without even any alterations or colors you can you can modify it too but one pentatonic g major penta could be the one chord it could be the four chord it could be the five chord because it does not have that seventh degree or the fourth degree and when you're dealing with modes the lydian mode has a sharp four the mixolydian has a flat seven but the major pentatonic scale is one two three five six there's no four and there's no seven so the those two notes help define the key center so again, if we were just to play G major penta, you can have you can essentially be in three different keys. And there's more than that even. <laughs> then you can get it, you can do parallel, you can do the blues styles of soloing as well. It's pretty awesome. And the so it's also very tensionless, that pentatonic scale. It just sounds so sweet. I would just pedal on this like a G. Similarly, E. And then, of course, through the chord progression. <laughs> so, um, that's the pentatonic scales. That's that's why I'm here to promote it. Today's lesson is sponsored by, you got it, the pentatonic scale. <laughs> I should open up a comp start a company called the pentatonic scale. We give one. So let me load up this um, sound slice here. This one's actually a free one. It's just a public one, that means. So you're going to see this in a second here. It should be. You can see my face, and I, you see my video. Let's see. If you haven't watched it, and then the A, three, open, two, 
open, two, open, two, open, three, open, and three. So basically this lesson here just goes through all five positions. So use it. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. Well, actually, I will go through all of them with you. Today is a good practice session, so let's do it. Uh, th this is the first and the most popular and the essential right here, this open E. So you have zero, three, zero, two. Hopefully you're reading the tabs, zero, two. If you're reading the notes, I'm proud of you, zero, two. Probably about 2% of the guitar players in the world can read notes. Zero, three, zero, three. You all know the sheet, the story, right? How do you make a guitar player shut up or whatever? Stop playing rather. Maybe it's nice. You put sheet music in front of them <laughs> without tabs, no tabs. All right. But we're going to use tabs for this, of course. Um, so you got it. And then make sure you go descending. It feels different. minor chord, hit a C major chord, D major, and a G, and an F, and a C, right? Ah, I hope you said F. F's not in the key of G, but that's what I'm saying. That's what's so beautiful. When you have an E minor pentatonic scale, G major penta, you can be in three different keys, three different keys from the E minor, okay? E, the minor, um, um, if you just saw a minor chord, it could be the two, it could be the three, it could be the sixth degree of the scale in the chord. Same with the major, okay? So you wanna make sure you kind of can know that type of theory stuff. If you don't know it, check it all out on Patreon, of course. Uh, type in the chat where you are, who you are, and if you're enjoying these lessons, don't forget to like and subscribe and send me a tip, a big tip. <laughs> There's a big dollar sign right there next to the chat. Um, all right, let's go back to open this up. So that's the first one. That's that's the important one, by the way. That's the most common, the most important one. That's the same as a 12th fret up here, but just not with open strings. And that's why I put number one here. It's just an octave higher, this. So as you, if you didn't notice, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, that's what makes this one so special. So basically you just bar across the 12th fret. But you're gonna get it all ringy. That's kind of a cool sound though. And that's what makes it so common again, because it's so easy that you don't have to, you don't have to worry about zigzagging back and forth, which you'll discover in a second. And I notice over here I can't spell pentaonic. <laughs> um let's see. Let's do the next one here. Um I, I have to kind of tell you this uh, too, because I know I know many of many people learn this because they're blues players, the 12 bar blues. And you know, you that this is really interesting. You have an E chord or E7, but you're playing this G natural. This, I'm already making that stinky face, right? Right? But we know that as a purple haze chord, the sharp nine. So that, that note, even though we have a major third in the chord and the minor third on the, on the scale, it's actually a blues chord. It's a seven or jazzy chord, whatever you call it. E7 sharp nine. We could do it here too. Okay. So you gotta just embrace that when you're doing 12 bar blues. You have the, I'm gonna talk about this real briefly, so please hang out with me. We have E7, you have the G, which is the sharp nine. You have E, which is the root. Think about this. I'll say it nice and slow. You have D, which is the flat seven. 
Mm. I'm just talking about why this sounds so good and makes it so bluesy, even though theoretically it doesn't work. And I already just justified it. Sharp nine, root, flat seven, five, the 11 or the four on the E. There's no, it's not in the chord, but it sounds good to go. And then when you go to A7, you have the E, G, which is the flat seven, E, which is the fifth. I don't know if you guys have already done this, but it's important to do this. D is the 11, the four again, B is the nine, and A is the root. Back to E. You can just hang on any one of these notes. B7? Ready for this? B7 here? Look at my hand. But look at this G here. Sharp five. Over here, it sounds jazzy. <laughs> Same note, but I'm just doing it here. Beautiful. See, that's in the 12 bar blues of B7. But you're doing this against this. That's a sharp five. The 11. The D, which is a sharp nine. Right? This is why it's so tasty against the B7. Because the B7 has a D sharp. But you're playing a D natural from the E blue scale, or pentatonic rather. I'm not even playing the blue note. The B is a root, and the A is a flat seven. So I'm curious, have did you guys know that, or have you thought about how it all relates to the 12 bar blues, the three chords, E7, A7, and B7? Because again, that's an E major chord. But the rock and roll players, I'm talking about Clapton. The chord is major. And then you go to A major or A7, play the same licks. That sounds great. You get all those colors. Then the B7, same licks. A7. But that B7, you can get that the sharp five, sharp nine. So it's pretty colorful. It's pretty jazzy. I'll just say that. You have this. See, that's when I played up here, you'd be like, oh, that's jazzy. Sharp five, sharp nine. That's what you get in the blue scale. Sorry. That's what you get in the pentatonic scale when you play E minor penta against the B7 chord. So kind of what I'm demonstrating here is how that, that scale can have many uses. And we want to take advantage of all those uses. And that goes beyond face value. So before I go further with that theory of application, I'd rather just make sure you know your scales, your pentatonic scales. You have the shapes memorized and that you can play simple rock Simple pop, folk, jazz, as I mentioned, on these, or Fly Me to the Moon, or Lullaby at Burnland, stuff like that. Um, questions? <laughs> oh, you will. You will. <laughs> With the clouds in the background, I feel like that scene in the movie Crossroads. You guys know that scene I'm talking about? <laughs> You're gonna meet Jack Butler. <laughs> it's like the clouds are turning dark behind you. You will. All right, let's go on. Sorry, bad reference. If you guys haven't seen the movie Crossroads, go watch it. So let's get back to work. Um, here is the five pentatonic shapes. And again, I really highly suggest that you stay in one shape and make as much music as you can. I already have autumn leaves in here, a little bossa nova feel. I went to the next position because I explored that one one time through the whole form. Ready? Number two. Improvise. And 
and then maybe go back to number one. And don't worry, I do have these practice videos on Patreon. <laughs> Everything's on Patreon, of course. All my sound size practice videos. So I have this a uh, few different songs like I'm demonstrating here already set up for you with these backing tracks for you. Okay, number three here. And oh, I hope you got number two. There's one little trick I want to show you here. I want you kind of similarly to what I demonstrated here where I said each string, each time you cross to the new string, you have an the open, 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 open. That's really helps memorize that, what they call the box shape. Well, this one, you don't have that, unfortunately. But if you play three, two, 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 three, three, like this, you get a chord. This is where I get to quiz you. See who's awake and who's watching. What chord is it? If you do this, and this is part of the visualization process that I recommend. Like this. Okay. Anybody name that chord? G69, Keith, bam. G69. We love that chord in jazz. G69. Any 69. That's a pentatonic chord. I hope, check out my lesson. It should just say, or check out my shorts too. <laughs> Not my shorts I'm wearing now. <laughs> check out my sh my YouTube shorts. Pentatonic. Because I, I have one where I say, this is a pentatonic chord. This one chord contains all five notes of the pentatonic. You don't believe me? G is the one. B is the three. E is the six. A is the two. D in the nine. And G D is the five. So one, two, three, five, six. They're not in order, but that's the pentatonic chord, the six, nine chord. Similarly, here's C, six, nine, and that's a pentatonic chord. Why is that important? That helps you visualize, because then you can do this, this outline, because you're visualizing this chord shape. Then you add on the other note like this. So Keith, no, not Keith, not you, Keith, sorry. Vince, Garaldi. I can't play right now because it's not holidays. Um, the 6 9 is a pentatonic. Just remember that, right? Let's go back to work. So again, put on the backing track, jam out learn these, stay in one position at a time. Don't necessarily try to blaze through all of these. Number three, and I'm just going through them one with you at one at a time here. Number three is this. This is very cool that you have five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. I'm just talking about the shapes, the tabs. Again, uh, don't worry about reading the notes. We know what five notes we have, which is the, what's really important right now is that you memorize the patterns. I know many of you are going, whoo, thank God. I don't have to memorize the notes. <laughs> no, just memorize the shapes. Here, look at what we could do on Sound Slice, you guys. If you haven't used Sound Slice, just hide the notes. Just Now we're just left with tabs. We love tabs. Come on, admit it. You love tabs. Type in the chat if you love tabs. And I'm going to, you don't need it there. You don't need to see me. So again, this is just the tabs right here. This somehow my notation got taken away too though. This is starting. This is the number three position. And what's important now is that you just memorize it. Have fun. Put on the back of track. Ah, 
hours of fun. Seriously, once you get these down and you can navigate through all five positions, you, it, the fretboard just opens up. You don't have to think about it anymore. However, don't try to do too much at once. And don't try to do too many different keys at once. These are just my practice tips. Master G major slash E minor, and then C major slash A minor. If you are just joining in, I put these PDFs in the tabs in the description for you to practice and download and print. Or you can use my sound size practice videos, which are on Patreon. So we're right here. You got this one down. Here's the next one, starting on B which is the third degree of the G or the fifth degree of E minor. That's really how I'm thinking of it. So here's this one. You're going to see like, ooh, seven, 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 seven. That's what we want to see. We want to spot these. Actually, it's a beautiful chord when you do it like this. It's still a pentatonic chord, right? But you have to do this. Let me see who's here in the chats. Tom has a question for E minor. I think the E minor seven arpeggio. Oh, yeah. I love that idea, too. Now let's talk about what Tom says there. And let's talk about this because this is another way to think of it. And I, I'm a big fan of this way, too, Tom. Here's E minor seven arpeggio. One, flat three, five, flat seven, and then eight. But let's not do the eight. Let's just go one. Flat three. This is a very important, by the way. If you if you don't know your intervals, you got to make sure you know you learn the number, the number talk, the intervals. Like this is a one E, and if I said play me the fifth, if I said play the four, play the flat seven octave. That that is essential. I uh, check out my interval videos where I just quiz quiz you. Never enough practice. Flat three. But that's um, the minor. Seven arpeggio is one flat three, five flat seven. That's four notes, one note shy of the pentatonic. And as Tom says, he thinks of it as E minor seven arpeggio, and then add in the four, which is now the pentatonic. So yeah, you can think of it that way for sure too. Great way to think of it. However, when I on an E minor seven chord, I know I could play the E minor pentatonic scale and add in that four, which is now is a jazzer called an eleven E minor eleven. So that's a nice way to think of it. So you get the eleventh degree. There's no nine though. I got to make sure you know there's no ninth. That's a beautiful note too, but that's not in there. So now I'm just showing you this one position here on the seventh fret. I know what you're saying. Hey, put those tabs back up. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm looking at the comments, so I'll see what else. Chris, you hoser. Repeat that. No, it's too late. I don't know what you're, I don't even know what I said. Probably just rubbish. Sorry, you got to re-watch re the video. Um, let's move on. Type in the comments if you guys want me to have questions on anything that I'm saying. Uh, 710, 710, 79, 79, 810, 710, and then go backwards, and then put on the backing track. So let's go on. We're getting through these shapes. I'm just demonstrating. And then we're on this one right now. Again, these sound size practice videos are great because we could we could just turn on the metronome, give us a little count in and say, okay, let's just practice this one. We can loop it and just go up and down it all day long till you get it. You can 
you could take out that count and that was kind of annoying. But again, these are great to practice too. So hopefully you got that one there. By the way, I got to show you this chord. Six nine. I see this six nine. The G six nine all right here. Ten nine nine ten ten. Bam. We know that as a G six nine chord, right? Do you see it for you jazzers? Ten nine nine ten ten. G six nine. Without the face, we can wrap your thumb around. Make it is. So that's G6. Beautiful chord shape. Okay. Uh, let's go on. You guys are doing awesome. Type in the comments if you have comments <laughs> or questions. Um, again, I'm just showing you how, how I recommend learning and practicing these. Um, we're almost done with these, and I'll show you the diagonal method. Um, you've got that one down good. Oh yeah, we're back. We're done. But this 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 particular version doesn't have the diagonal shape, so I'll save that for later. These are just the five positions. So there you go. Um, let me go to and load up a different one now. Uh, type in the comments if you like this. Let me know. Do that too. Uh, let's see. I have autumn leaves already on here. Let's see where that is. Um, autumn leaves pentatonic study. Where are you? I've got a few different ones. I've got key of C, which is A minor. I've got sunny. I've got isn't she lovely? Summertime. This is all on Patreon, you guys, if you want to get, you, you know, uh, I got just the two of us. I've got a lot of A minor and C major. The two, Those are the two most important ones I usually have students work with. G major slash E minor, and then C major slash A minor, and then, of course, G minor slash what? Quiz time. G minor equals what major penta? Thanks, Keith. G minor equals what major? B flat major. Keith is fast today. That's exactly right. Super important for jazz progressions. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you guys here all day, but let me just show you a couple more things here. Um, show you one more. that The play along, I think this is important to help you just have fun. Make sure you always sing what you play, too. Um, I see this on here. I'm just going to load this up because it has my autumn. It's, it has autumn leaves. This is a triplet study. I've got a lot of different little pentatonic studies. Um, here, let me load up this. So now what you see is a triplet study. It's the same idea. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And the next position. So again, it's more about technique. That, but don't even worry about the triplets. I just want you to get these positions down. Don't even worry about the my my recommendations. But these are just great to to have you play in uh, play with the backing track. So you just do this. So right now I'm just kind of going up 
through all five positions, really six positions going through that pentatonic scale in triplets along with that backing track. So again, what I'm just demonstrating now is just how to practice. That sun is really trying to get through here to us. There. <laughs> I think that's a sign. Y'all ready for the big solar eclipse? Triplets at Malmsteen. <laughs> Mal Which Malmsteen? Chris Hoser Malmsteen or, or Ingve? But seriously, the um, a triplet, and you could do the kind of the Jimmy Page style riff. Those little patterns, those triplets, they sound good. They seem, they, they're, they're legit. So just have fun with it. Pattern sequences, 16th notes. I was going to load up, um, we won't do key of C today. I don't want to bore you guys. Um, but key of G, just master it. Put on some backing tracks. Um, play Summertime in the key of G major, which is E minor, right? Play just your favorite songs, your rock songs. Play Brown Eyed Girl, whatever. Master these pentatonics. That's what I'm saying. In, the, in this key. And then move to the next one. And again, I have these on Patreon as well. Well, I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Sorry, I'm trying to block the sun. See you guys next time. Have a great evening. Appreciate you watching. Join me on Patreon if you haven't already. <laughs> Bye.